What do you think of that action? Um, you haven't heard from Kristen Burt yet? Oh, there she is. She did pop up there. We, we, are, we got There her. you are. I've been here for like five minutes. Ooh, Why not? Head of your last segment. I didn't have that knowledge. What a nice guy Jesse Cove is. Did you listen to the interview? I literally caught it as he was like, goodbye, thank you. Oh, you did? Okay. Do <laughs> yeah. you know him at all? Martin Cove, obviously, his father. But Jesse, what a straight ahead. Because once in a while, and I know, Kristen, you've been through this. I should mention this. Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. But you, in your career, many times, I'm sure, interviewed people who would be the son of or the daughter of or whatever, and they have this attitude like, well, let's see. Um, my mother, my father was a very, very popular big shot, so I think I'll be a prick to everyone. Sometimes they don't want to talk about their parents at all because the, the Nepo baby label, just it's its a struggle for them. And I, I understand, like, so many doors open for them in their career. But at the same time, once the doors are open, they're fighting those mm -hmm. open doors the whole time. So its it's really a challenge. But... Um, I just want to say I covered Martin Cove during Dancing with the Stars. He did oh, it a couple God. seasons ago. Uh, but I have to say I'm a huge Cobra Kai fan. So I would, I mean, he couldn't really dance, but he was so sweet and was up for the challenge, even if, you know, he didn't really learn how to waltz. But Are they going to come back with a sixth season or is it a seventh season? I know, they have one There's more one season final though. season remaining. Uh, that's right. And it's the yeah. sixth season, I think. Six, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. Catherine, I watched that show too. And I was... I'm kind of shocked that I watched that show because I don't usually like like you know karate shows with high schoolers and that kind of thing. <laughs> you guys ever watch that show, uh, Cobra Kai? I'm obsessed. No, I, I was kind of in the same boat as you, Tom. I was like, I saw the movie. I don't don't think I need to see a TV show, but hearing the reviews of it, it might be something I want to check out. Yeah, yeah, I've heard nothing but good stuff. Like that's, uh, it, it seems like one of those they're making it just for the sake of like the name recognition and, you know, the karate kid, let's, you know, let's cash in while we can, but I've heard nothing but good stuff. So I need to check it out. The writing is smart. And if you've watched, I would highly suggest at least watching the first karate kid. If you haven't watched it before mm -hmm. or refresh yeah. yourself, yep. you just need the first movie's fine. And then you just go into it. Cause there's some nostalgia things, some callbacks and things like that. Mm. But what really got me is the stunt work is astonishing on this i am not an action person at all and it is mm -hmm. beautiful to watch they really showcase karate in in a wonderful way yeah no question about it it's it's it is a good show um but no i was i was very I, i'll move on i know i'm dwelling a little bit but the, jesse cove he really impressed me because once in a while because his da dad does have an edge to him he's a very nice guy but he does have an edge right Definitely on camera. His characters yeah. always are the villain, but he's he's a very nice guy in person. See that I'm I believe that 100 percent after talking to his son because his son's a great guy. First time I ever talked to him, really really decent person. Um, I was just telling these guys about Bass Reeves. We finished uh, Catherine and I finished the series. Have you seen it, Kristen? Um, I've seen a couple of episodes, but I haven't finish the season or anything else like that but uh because i've literally done three award shows in eight oh, days thank you very God. much i was up oh. last night <laughs> i wrote 11 articles yesterday so if i oh. look a little tired today <laughs> you don't you look great or if i have carpal tunnel syndrome y'all know why <laughs> nope you're covered you're good to go you look great there's no, no question thanks. about it no you know it, was, it was a long day and i had a couple radio hits too for the emmys and it was it was super fun but it was it, it's to do three large shows because it was critics choice golden globes and the primetime emmys in that short span mm -hmm. obviously the primetime emmys we're from 2023 left over from the strike so we'll have another oh, primetime emmys sure. in eight months so we'll be back here very soon yes. you'll be tired um, again we'll be tired again but just uh it's really unusual but some of the stars that had to attend all three shows you could tell there was a little bit of fatigue last night what do you think of the emmy choices on succession you know, there were three shows that won, and that's pretty much it. It, mm -hmm. it looks, it was Succession, it was The Bear, and it was Beef. So right, those right. are the shows that Hollywood sort of like crowned for 2023. All I loved all three shows, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I thought the wins were all justified, including Succession. And I want to say that that was probably the best Emmys we have seen in a decade. Because it I was agree. the 75th anniversary. Did you watch, Tom? Mm-hmm. You watched the show last night? Yeah. 
you never watch a war. Is anyone else never. shocked like me? <laughs> what, I thought the guy was like, I must have heard him wrong because I think he said right. yes. I, that's why I doubled back. Wait, I you doubled know, back. <laughs> you know why though? I watched it because I'm I'm a big fan of Succession. Uh, plus, I have a you know, I do actually. I like all three shows to tell you the truth. But Succession, I really like because Kieran Culkin is a very, very special guy in reality and on screen. What a prick he is on that show. It's phenomenal. And he's so adorable in person. Yeah, like, yeah he is. Absolutely. You just know he's fun to hang out with. <laughs> um, I thought that the callbacks, all in the nostalgia, like some of the TV reunions, whether mm -hmm. it was All in the Family or Martin or they did um, Ally McBeal, they were all great because it was the 75th anniversary. It completely makes sense. The in memoriam I thought was done very tastefully. Sometimes they they try and do something really different, and you're like, oh, that that was cringe. <laughs> um, and and Christina Applegate like getting out there and crying and then making everyone laugh at the same time was just a really great moment. Right, no question about that. So yes, I I, I confess I did watch. I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched some of it, and quite a bit of it actually. And it's I think well, Catherine and I really really like Succession a lot. And you know, Ali Wong, uh, I've always enjoyed her. She, she's a wonderful, nice, very she, nice person. Ali Wong had, um, and I don't know who the E! interviewer was, but she's a stand-up comedian. And obviously interviewing Ali Wong was kind of like a dream come true for her. Right. And I have to say, the, the stand-up comedian was very nervous and was kind of making jokes, but Ali like went with it. What did a, a, exactly like a yes and and kind of added to it or quipped back and mm -hmm. made her feel so comfortable. And I was like, that was so gracious of her because it was clear that like she was interviewing her idol. And I was like, it just made me love Ali Wong even more because some celebrities will just railroad you if you're nervous or you ask a question or you trip or or a joke lands flat. And Ali just was like, I'm here for you. I got you. And uh, it was on E! News. And I thought, yes, that is exactly why Ali Wong deserves all the success. Because she understands what she needs to do on camera. But there's also that sort of like PR and marketing thing that you need to do to mm -hmm. be really successful. And she's mm -hmm. got it. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because I was thinking about that. Um, you know, being around for 53 years doing morning shows and podcasts and all that stuff. I've interviewed just about everybody that's ever been born. And one thing I really enjoy is that this generation, this current generation, has really stepped up and they're really good. You know, because in reality, this generation is much more reserved than we were. They, very, while being reserved, they're also very judgmental, don't you think? I don't think we're judgmental. I would say that, that younger generations are just calling out what's wrong and trying to make it right. And that would be judgmental. Because in a good way, though. Well, we'll see if you were right about it being wrong or not, though. That's the problem, <laughs> right? Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me you're 21 years old? Is that what I'm you're not. Saying? I'm saying I'm Gen <laughs> X. I'm Gen X. That's not a secret. But and I but I think like that. I, but I think it's interesting watching millennials, but particularly Gen Y, of them just saying, "Nope, not going to accept that in the workplace." Which you know, I feel like Gen X was like yeah, this isn't a good idea. Maybe like planted the seed, you know, and then millennials like took it a couple more steps. But Gen Y is like, we're running the marathon and we're not going to stop mm -hmm. until it's done. And I really appreciate that about Gen Y. As long as they deliver on it. Yeah. Well, and kind of like Chris is kind of piggyback on what you're saying. Like the, I feel like you went from being like, no more is it, well, it, because it's always been this way, so this is the way it's always going to be. Like they go, like, well, just because it was that way doesn't mean that's we can make it better. Like they're so like I feel like that's kind of the route that they take. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and just simple things like how women are treated in the workplace. A lot of the sexual harassment, even I went through, in in all sorts of facets when I worked in a restaurant and when I worked in a movie theater oh, sure. and whatever to yep. the entertainment industry. It's it's all happened, and um, even just those those even small imperceptible changes in addition to all the big sweeping changes, but the small ones of feeling empowered to just say, you can't say that, no, mm -hmm. or I'm not gonna go with that or stop it. So I, I think that that has shifted and that stuff is good. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. So got about a minute, any closing shows you're gonna tell me about that I <laughs> will really enjoy? Yeah, just a couple of things uh, to look out for. Um, in the late night space after midnight premieres tonight, 
Okay. And that takes J- James Corden's spot, if everyone remembers that on CBS. And it's mm-hmm. from the old Comedy Central kind of game show. But Taylor Tomlinson, we got a female in late night. This is her big night tonight. So we'll see how that goes and see how that shakes up the ratings. Um, there's a great June Carter Cash documentary. If anyone is interested in country music, it's on Paramount Plus. Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, Reese Witherspoon's all in it, which is really amazing. And it's the season finale of Fargo tonight. The season for that, I'm we actually just finished season four, which was phenomenal, and we're going to start season five now. And the last one's on tonight, huh? Yeah, yeah, for season five. So perfect for you because now you can just dive into the whole season and not have to worry about waiting for another episode. That's exactly right. But I tell you what, that show that you know, those boys are from Minnesota, the Cohen brothers from Minnesota, and uh, I've pretty much enjoyed everything they've ever done. They're really, really good. They're so talented. Yep. They're dark humor. They do dark humor in, in such a way that you're like, I'm not upset that I just laughed at something that was so horrific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a good way to put it. People All are right. in a wood chipper. No big deal. Yeah, we will. <laughs> we're going to talk to you tomorrow. I hope. Yes, I will be back on Wednesday. Right. Thanks very much, Kristen Bird. Entertainment news brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender.